So you'll be the first generation in your family as women going to school. Hello, let me show you something. This is $1.25, and where I live, it will buy you a very small cup of coffee. Millions of people around the world exist on less than this amount a day. Now, the numbers have gone down, but there's still a lot of work to be done. At a time when the world is looking at how to reduce extreme poverty, the spotlight has been turned on women. Wherever they have the opportunity to be actively involved in their local communities and economies, there are huge benefits to the people around them too. Global economists and researchers know that investing in women pays off. It's not just the right thing to do, it's smart economics, because there's a ripple effect that spreads into the wider community. So, let's take a look at how this works down on the ground. If you grew up in the developing world, getting an education can be a challenge. But thanks to a huge global push, there are now more children in primary school than ever before. Girls still lag behind, though, and often drop out of secondary education altogether. In Tamale, Ghana, Dolores Dixon and Zainab Andan are working hard to make sure that doesn't happen. I've seen the time pedi towards the exams. Those who have not paid their fees, make sure you go and settle your debts. Those who have not paid their fees, we shall sack them from the exams. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Auntie. How are you? I'm doing great. Mm. I'm Dolores Dixon, and I'm here this week um, working on our battery program. How are you feeling? This being your first day in this school. It's great, but. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, so. The whole idea is to support a girl through a journey and to get them to a point where they become economically independent. So the young girls go through secondary school with the support. They receive everything that they need to be able to stay and progress. Once they complete school, they are serving as learner guides where they're going back to the schools to support boys and girls to improve their performance. to talk about needs and wants. So who can tell me what basic human needs are? But yes, nimatsu. Basic human needs are the things we can't do without, such as food, shelter. A clap for nimatsu. Actually, I'm here to introduce my better world as the MBW program introduced by Comfort to help learners in the senior high school to overcome their learning challenges. I want you guys to name the things we want in life. Uh, money. You want money? Money? Yes. Clothing. Clothing. Education. She wants education. But you don't need education. You want education. OK. Throughout my senior high school, I had the opportunity to be part of the Belgium program. When I completed, they trained me as a learner guide. So I can help my, young sis my younger sisters and elder sisters to overcome their challenges and to be a better people, a better person in the community. If your mother went to school, raise up your hand and let me see. So your mothers did not go to school. So you will be the first generation in your family as women going to school, isn't it? So when you go up, what do you want to be? I want to be a medical doctor. I want to be a teacher. Do you know any female doctor? For now, I don't know any. So if you become a female doctor, we we'll make a change. Mm. Why do you want to be a teacher? So I want to encourage my fellow girls. As a teacher, you spend my time with your students. So I want to encourage them 
to not give up. They should just continue. A young girl in Ghana usually faces a lot of barriers when they have to access education and particularly for rural communities where poverty is very endemic. So for these communities where um, they have large families as well, they have to make decisions around who gets the opportunity to go to school. So it's an opportunity cost for parents. And usually they tend to focus on the boys. Sometimes we go to kindergarten and you see that there are even more girls than there are boys in kindergarten. That is because the population of Ghana has more female than male. But as they go up, you see that the trend is changing. When you get to P6, you will realize that there will be more boys in the classroom than girls. As they keep going up, you see the girls dropping out, particularly at adolescence. And that's because they can be used to really generate income for the family. Exchange marriage is very prevalent. Child marriage is very prevalent. And so these are issues that young girls particularly face and there are huge hurdles to them being able to continue their education. Before we started working in your school, your headmaster told me that when they take 400 Form 1 people, only 85 are girls, the rest are boys. Isn't it shocking? Now that we are supporting the girls, now you see the number of girls are increasing in your school. Since 1998 to date, we're supporting over 53,000 girls. This current academic year, 2015, we're supporting 36,000 girls. So clearly there is a huge need and that is what we're trying to address. It's very difficult. Second to last, last two years, so I didn't to my man to the sound. So, we like a dwell a little bit secondary school, and it'll be from nursery to pieces. That even yellow will have drama, and put a marachan, and say drama, and that's some. But look at your teachers, one come, shakam. Sometimes <laughs> And Especially at the baby I want to open your kitchen. I want to manage Help I to try, but no make out of like all life. I no my because no one will show you the man. I dab in another bench. I go, but I dab in my bo. Be don't let me go to school. Bench I can't wait to come. I catch a bit of school. But I need a bench. I can do it. My can man up. I was at a call. But I ain't to me. Come to me. Can you manage your class? Like one time, so I can go and borrow. Because I'm not time to work.
living in an ordinary home does not bring me down. It pushes me hard because I look up to role models. I have um, mentors. And one of my biggest mentors is my mom. She mentors me every day. She's a great woman. Actually, my mom is the breadwinner here because she takes care of the house. Since I've started growing up, in the, in the age of um, 10 to 15, things have not been easy because that was the period my dad passed away. It was very difficult for me to continue my education. They had to change me a school because of the money. Getting into the senior high school was some kind of little bit challenging to me because in the senior high, the fees is more higher and then you have to buy certain things, books and other things which were very expensive. So having the bursary selection, the day I had the chance to be part of it. So that was the best moment of my life. I felt special. I feel I wasn't left behind. I, was, I still have some people look after me. I'm going into a learner guide training now, which is training about um, over 100 young women to be learner guides in schools. Once they've done, they would form study circles with the children and support them through the academics. Of you finish school this year for one year what will you be sitting at home doing tell us what will you be sitting at home doing nothing you have to go back to the farm so this program has come to fill a serious gap for you it will give you the chance to discover yourself it will give you a chance to be able to give back to your community so let's take it very seriously and now when we go to the schools as learner guides I'm hoping that each one of you, by the time the program you finish next year, you should be able to say that because of me, 10 children, 10 young people have been able to pass. As a student when way back in school, I used to feel shy. I, I was the reserve type. I used not to mingle with other people, but since I had this opportunity to go through the trainings and other things, I can stand in front of people and talk. I feel like I'm someone better. I can do something in life. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to our next meeting for the week. Thank you. Kama is a network of young women who have completed senior high school through our bursary selection and they've gathered to um, give back to their communities. Our Kama core values are, I want someone to give me two core values that we have. One is spirit of volunteerism. Spirit of volunteerism. What else, yes? Mutual respect. Mutual respect. We respect one another. Giving back to our society. Giving back to our society. I joined um, the network when I completed my senior high school. I go through the leadership training and it's like democracy. When they vote and you win, then you be their leader. So I went in for this leadership and I was lucky to be one of their leaders. I'm very excited to be part of this program. And also, um, I will be going this coming um, Sunday to attend um, a yearly program in Accra, and I'm preparing very hard towards it because that's the biggest opportunity in my life to proceed my educational level.
Thursday and Sabla exam. Next week, Thursday. Last time, ma, nda bwa ninye grade isha, but nda bwa tounya. So this time, mbwa no like, nuku make a target to shell, ma. Kan, make a shock, kan, achieve an aim. So, nuku work a lot hard. Be, be make an effort to shell, and so on, down, ma. Do we seem to come back wasting it? Um, following through on our entrepreneurship program, which is helping young women establish innovative businesses in rural communities. Hey, that's back. What we recognized was that once young people complete secondary school, not all of them are going to go into tertiary. So we needed to create different pathways for them once they come out of school into the world of work. And one way of us doing that is looking at our entrepreneurship program. So how many groups like this do you have? I didn't have five groups. I actually grew up in a village where they are doing the processing of shea butter. So I used to follow my mother and go to the market. Sometimes they will sell it on credit. They will buy it and they will not get profit. So my business idea was based on the shea butter, packaging it, so organizing the women who are processing it to actually come out with quality products and also get buyers for them. She started off her business with um, two women and basically she had very small capital. We encouraged her to start it small. We also took her to a lot of um, exhibitions and conferences and she went to one um, exhibition in um, Cote d'Ivoire where she met with the Share Alliance and she had an order from the body shop. So what is the maximum you've done? 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Hey! It's incredible for her personally, for her business to grow, but beyond that, the number of people that she has engaged and is impacting is what we really see as the change that is happening with this business. <laughs> Involvement of Karma. I have access to the seed money and I plan for trainings to just build my confidence in how I'm going to go about businesses and other things. So when I took the seed money, I see to it that my mom is struggling with her business. Why not just come and add to her business so that I can support her to grow her business? Mm. Right now, she just finished buying her um, sacks. You can see we bought um, a new sack to arrange it very well so that those coming from the south can buy it so that it will look attractive for them. She's buying 10 bags today, that's a big order uh, as compared to what she normally buys for us to earn a living. That's what we are doing. So she thought you are talking of it. And your truth, Islamic. Biology, I'm in. We have had the privilege of seeing so many young people. When you meet them at first, very shy, very reserved. When they have this opportunity, the sky is the limit. That one person is able to change her family. And that family then changes their own families. And then you see that multiplier effect where the whole community is changing. And it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing.
you have two hours to answer the questions. You are writing elective mathematics. So I think you can start work. Today, I'm packing to move to Accra for um, the Young Leadership Initiative um, course, and it's a five weeks course. I'm very happy to be there because there are a lot of people coming from different countries. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to make friends. So I'm very happy. <laughs> My mom is going to be alone in the house, so I'm going to miss her. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me, so I'm going to miss her. Oh, <laughs> She always encouraged me. She always asked me to go higher and look after her, and that's what I'm doing right now. My dream is to be a journalist. And the biggest challenges I'll be facing is the education, education, education. But I'm working hard towards it. 